For all those who remember these guys. Of course, they're one of the biggest bands in the scene, but how did they get there? What's their story? That's what we're gonna find out today. So my friend, as usual, take a cup of coffee, cigarette, slice of pizza, whatever you feel like as we explore the Born of Osiris MySpace era. So the band was actually founded in 2003 in Chicago. And be prepared, the band wasn't called Bonavar Cyrus before going through several other names. Their first name in 2003 was Diminished. And back then they released some kind of emo core demo. It was called Your Heart Engraved These Messages. Pretty far from the Born of Osiris we all know, right? Don't worry, we're gonna get there. So, as it turns out, their first demo actually inspired them to change their band name from Diminished to Your Art Engraved. And under this name, they actually released a brand new demo, I think it was a year later, and it was called Yum Wara Yum. <laughs> How awesome is it to be able to hear a prehistoric version of Abstract Art, one of the biggest songs Born of Osiris ever released. And also, pretty funny, the name wasn't Abstract Art, it was Abstract Artists for Down Syndrome Girls. Anyway, 
Not long after that, they actually released a rap song. It was called Stressed. You can tell that the band wasn't afraid of trying other things. I'm on cigarettes, I I'm my cigarettes. Yo, what do y'all just wanna give me a rub in the front of the club with the bottle of rub? Pretty interesting, right? I don't know if you remember, but they actually uploaded it on their MySpace profile back then. A couple of years later, in 2006, they changed their name again for Rose Creance, which fun fact would become, I'm sure you know, one of Bon Cyrus' biggest songs. But we're gonna get there. I'm still getting ahead of myself. So yeah, this is the demo they released. Pretty solid, right? Especially for a demo. And can we appreciate the fact that they included actual crabs in the artwork? Was Born of Osiris aware, even back then, that the crab core wave would come? I guess we'll never know. Also, I guess the band members were really into rap music because, again, on this demo, they recorded two other rap songs. Which brings us to 2007, when the band finally settled for the new name, Born of Osiris. Their very first song under this name was Narnia, later retitled The Takeover. Awesome, right? So good. So yeah, with this new sound, the new band name and all that, they actually got signed by the very same label they're still signed today, Summerian Records, which is when they release one of the best EP of all time called The New Ring. I don't think you know how many times I've listened to this record. It was so good, so different and unique sounding. I know I say that in every single video, but it's undeniable. Born of Osiris really had their, their sound since the beginning. Also, I don't know if Summerian Record told the band like, stop doing rap music, <laughs> but on this one there was no rap, nothing, and I don't think they ever did again. So yeah, as you probably guessed, they were blowing up on MySpace, it was crazy, it was amazing. I think it was around the same period of time that Valve Maya was blowing up as well, but I'm not sure. If you've been watching my videos or if you were around during those days, you remember how the metal community really enjoyed shitting on deathcore and metalcore. But with Born of Osiris, it was undeniable how technical and good it was. Also, I don't know about you, but I've always associated Born of Osiris with Vel of Maya, which, spoiler alert, I'm gonna make a video pretty soon about. Anyway, it's time for the live performances. <laughs>
Amazing, right? So yeah, during this tour, they actually did an interview with Metal Injection. And for all those who think that when you blow up on MySpace or when you tour, you have a lot of money, just listen to this part of the interview. How, how do the per diems work? How does that? How we does get that? Ten bucks a day, every day. Each? Yeah. yeah. We for wake food up and like and you know get cigarettes. That. I, I mean, smoke, but... I mean uh, we're in New York. Ten bucks, I don't even think that'll get you breakfast. McDonald's dollar yeah. menu. menu. Is that is that your diet? The McDonald's? Yeah. Or Wendy's dollar Wendy's, menu. Wendy's, Taco Wendy's Bell. Is Taco Bell. Bell. Oh, Taco Bell. Forget yeah. about it. She's a good eater. I'm all about Burger, Burger King. King. Burger King. Nice. nice. You guys are five course, uh, five star meals. You guys, you don't eat. You don't believe in food. I fucking hate food. Interesting, right? I mean, I don't want to get started on this, but it just shows you that. It always takes a lot of work and dedication. Anybody who thinks that it's like from day to day, you release like one song or an album and then you blow up and you're rich, it barely ever works like that. You have to make your way to the top and that's what we're gonna see in this video with Born of Osiris. They were very hardworking and consistent. Anyway, they kept touring for a while, they did their thing and they went back in the studio to record a higher place. So freaking good. I mean, I don't know how they made it, but it was even more technical. It, they had more emotion in it, you know, the 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 synths and the ambience. Like it was, it was just amazing. They also released an official video for the song "Now Arise." I'm sure you all remember. Oof! It's it's like it's giving me the. MySpace era vibes, like quite a lot with this one. Also, the album peaked at number 73 on the Billboard 200. They were playing with bands like Cannibal Corpse, Hatebreed, and of course, Vel of Maya. Once again, they did amazing, crazy live performances. God, such an amazing era, right? It's also worth mentioning that in 2009, they asked Jason Richardson of All Shall Perish to join Born of Osiris. So a year later, in 2010, they went back with him in the studio. And yes, 
they release Studio Updates, which everybody knows at this point that I'm all about it, right? Cool. Which brings us to the release of their brand new album called The Discovery. So good, man. I mean, at this point, the band really had their sound, you know? You're gonna notice in the video they keep evolving, trying new things, but you could tell that they had their own thing and it was working very well. On the album, for the first time, well, except if you're counting the very first emo core demo, but yeah, I mean, for the first time on a full-length record, they had a clean singing song. Don't get me wrong, it's pretty good. If you've been watching my videos, you know I'm not that much about clean singing in metal, personally, it's just an opinion, but objectively, it was good. I also really like the production on the album. It feels like the bass is more present, it feels more heavy a little bit, and I'm not talking about the riffs or the breakdowns or whatever, I'm really talking about the sound in general. And it was exactly when they started using seven strings guitars, so I guess it makes sense. Well, I was always, well, not always. Uh, I played seven string for a little bit before we used it with the band, but um, I think it was just, you know, it just seemed like a good progression for us. Like, to me as a guitar player, I just see it as more options. Like, um, I always compare it to like a drum set with like one tom or, you know, like, you know, just like more cymbals or like anything, you know, it's just like you can play six string songs with a seven string. And it's like actually the first two albums were six string. And every night I play seven string guitars, even if they're the six string music. Um, I just ignore the seven string. So um, I don't know. It's cool because obviously being a heavy band, Low tuning is just heavy in general, you know, so like I feel like although we weren't trying to make like the heaviest record ever, like just switching to seven string complemented our music in that way that it automatically just sounds a little heavier and no matter what we're doing. They also mentioned that the name The Discovery was to represent that they were trying new things, they were, you know, they were discovering new things about themselves and the band, which I think was pretty interesting. They also did another interview in which he explained their new direction, the new experimental sound. We all, as far as the production of the keyboards, have a little bit to do with it. Like mm -hmm. programs mm -hmm. like uh, Omnisphere and stuff like that have really <laughs> kind of opened up our um, being able to be more experimental with that kind of stuff. I think that people hopefully will find that the keyboard tones on the album are a little bit more um, experimental than the previous ones. Also, they shared uh, their writing process. The one thing we wanted to do is work on transitions, the song structure and stuff like that, like bringing back cool parts so you don't just hear them for like three seconds and then they're gone and uh, little things like that. The ideas are really way better put together. So now, before moving on, I just want to give a shout out to Sumerian Records because 
the more I do research about the bands they were managing, the more I'm realizing how great they were at promotion and they were even ahead of their time, you know, releasing studio updates and like teasers. And I know you're gonna tell me that a lot of labels were doing that, but I just feel like Sumerian was doing that in a very outstanding way. Which, while we're on the topic, during those days they released another official video for the song Recreate. A great song with a very heartwarming meaning to it. Uh, we, as a family, have become really close, and that's even apparent. We create a song from Discovery. Um, a lot of you know that song's mainly about us as a family, because uh, we're we best friends. Yeah, we're best friends. We live together. We tour together. We're always right together. now. We live with our parents, though, and I'm like, yo, let's get a house. We are. We're gonna get a house in like a be, couple we months. We need to be together. We, we need to write a new album. We need to. Yeah. You know, so awesome to hear and to see how close they were and how real they were as people. So yeah, they said they all wanted to live together. Well, guess what? That's exactly what they did. Hello, welcome to the Temple of Osiris. What's up? This is Lee. I'm gonna give you a little tour of my room. Welcome to my room. Right here we have the little monkeys and the humping chihuahua. I mean, for any underground band or artist or anybody really, it was very inspiring and motivating to see, you know, you could live in a house with your band or with your friends and just make it, you know, go 100% in your dreams. At least it was inspiring for me, I guess. Anyway, after the album and all that, they announced a big tour. Now, did you really think I was about to move on without showing you the live performances? So awesome, man. In 2012, they did an interview in which they mentioned how it was to live all together. But most importantly, they announced that they were working on a brand new album. Just uh, signed a new lease all together in a new house. And uh, we're going to get home from this tour and write a new album. And it should be out um, summertime, early fall. So with that mindset, in 2013, they came back with Tomorrow We Die Alive. What a sick album, dude. Is it just me or Born of Osiris just makes you travel in another dimension or another world? It's crazy. Honestly, I think it's fair to say that this album is another fan's favorite. They have very iconic, great metalcore songs on it. 
they released a new official video for Divergency. And another one for Machines. And yes, I'm gonna show you the live performances again. During another interview, they mention how amazing the summer tour was for them. It's incredible, it's really fun. This is by far my favorite tour out of every tour I've been on for the summer. Um, we did Warp Tour last year, it was really fun too, but we this year we have a way better stage, way better crowd. Yeah, and it's it a just, metal show. It's just metal, it's just us, it's really good. Hell yeah. What do you think, Lee? Also, in 2014, they did an awesome episode of Bus Invader. Found some uh, Schweikman snacks. Only from your finest shirt. <laughs> <coughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Oh my god. <laughs> I wish I wish you could I say that that was like <laughs> acting and that was a joke. No, that seriously smelled like that was god. That was like a week ago when we that was, Yeah, that was we were like in the south when we got that thing somewhere. Until in 2015, they came back with a brand new single called Throw Me in the Jungle. In October, they finally released their brand new album called Soul Sphere. Very good album, but very different, at least in my opinion. They still had their Born of Osiris signature ambience and like breakdowns and stuff like that, but the kind of like clean singing and, and bouncy riff and stuff like that, like they were um, going on the gent wave, I believe. At least that's how I'm perceiving it which wasn't bad at all, it was just a little less my thing, if I can be honest. But keep in mind, Born of Osiris, how I see it, they were a metalcore band and they still are a metalcore band. They were not really on the blast beat, deathcore side of things. They're metalcore, melodic metalcore. So it makes sense to have like clean singing and different parts. I would be wrong to tell you that it didn't belong there or whatever. So then they did another official video for the other half of me. And another one for the song Illuminate. Of course, after the release, the shows were awesome. Which brings us to 2017, when they came back with a new song called Glorious Day. But here's the thing, it wasn't a new song at all. It was a song from their 2004 demo and it was supposed to be on the new rang, but it just never made it. 
Anyway, it was a great song. Awesome, right? But they didn't stop there. They actually announced that they would re-release the new Rang, new and improved, to celebrate the 10-year anniversary. Like right after the new Rang came out, I, I, there were already so many things I wished we could change, uh, and, and that you know usually you never get to do that. So it was it was just a lot more relaxed feeling to get into the studio and already did bow down in one take for the, the re-release. That never happens with anything, so that's what was different, stuff like that, and uh, it was just fun. It, it, was, it was just so relaxed and just felt no pressure. It was, it, I had a really, really fun time doing it. Glorious Day was actually supposed to be on the new rain. We only had a week, and I really wanted the song to be on the album, but it's we just simply didn't have time, so... I'm so happy that it, we got to bring it back because that, that song means a lot to me and I put a lot of hard work into it. I put a lot of hard work into the new rain. I really love how the band members see their first album and still respect it and still enjoy playing it live because there's so many bands that after a few years they're kind of shitting on what they did first, you know, which I can understand to a certain extent because, you know, you improved as a musician and then you look back and you're like, ah, I could have done better. But I really appreciate the fact that Born of Osiris are still happy about the fans' reaction, are still happy about the fact that their very first song are still appreciated to this day. We've, we've always had an overwhelming response uh, with our first album. Uh, just having it be a, a, little, a lot different than what everyone was doing at the time and it feels surreal uh, to be uh, just as a band celebrating our 10 years of, of this album that changed a lot of stuff for in our lives and I think it influenced a lot of other uh, bands and stuff like that. It's, it's just unreal. I'm, uh, drives me to want to like work a lot harder um, and see what else we can do. So on that note, pun intended, they finally released their new album called The Eternal Ring. I really like what they did. Don't get me wrong, I'm not going to be the guy saying it was better than the first one or it was worse or whatever. I don't like to compare, you know, it's, it's just different. But that being said their improvement as musician uh the new production and all that it made the songs you know shine in a different light and it was great so they kept doing their thing until 2018 when they came back with a new song called silence the echo Super cool song, very gent and groovy, while keeping the Born of Osiris signature ambience or something, I don't know what to call that. Also, pretty much at the same time, unfortunately, they announced that David, their bassist, was quitting the band, but there was no drama or anything, it was really amicable, it was just, you know, like in most of my videos, I'm sure you noticed, it was just because he wanted to move on and do other things. Then in November, they released another brand new video to announce another new single called The Accursed. Which brings us to 2019 when they released their brand new album called The Simulation. A very good album. At this point, I don't really know what to say about it because Born of Osiris really had their sound and their vibe and it was, you know, it was just always good. They released a brand new official video for the song Cycles of Tragedy. And a live performance video for the song Under the Gun. So late, so late, 
Of course, once again, they were killing it live. Such an amazing band, man. It's it's crazy. Anyway, they kept doing their things until in 2021, they came back with a very different, brand new song called White Nile. So good, but also so different, but in a good way. I'm telling you, trust me, listen to that song and from the beginning to the end, there's no boring part, everything is good. I was kind of hoping that their whole new record would be like Wild Nile, but they went in another direction, which is fine. They're still Born of Osiris, they're still very good, but I think Angels or Alien, it's, it's his own thing. I mean, for the first time, they added straight up clean vocals. So yeah, as you know, I'm a big fan of deathcore, raw, brutal songs, but that being said, I can objectively say that the album is great and very technical and I'm not saying in any way we're just talking about my own preferences, I guess. I mean, Bon Iver Cyrus deserves every single bit of success they have. They're super talented, they have a great vibe as people, and I'm just very happy that they're still around, still killing it. It's awesome. And while we're here, can we take a second to appreciate how talented their drummer Cameron is? Anyway, that's pretty much it, guys. Once again, it was an honor to cover such an amazing band. And as you might have noticed, I'm not only limiting myself to the MySpace era, now I'm basically telling the whole band story. Let me know if you're on board with that or if you would rather have me talking only about MySpace. As usual, if you want to help the channel or support me, it's just about leaving a like, subscribing to the channel if you didn't already, and please comment. I really enjoy reading your comments. Every single day I take your time with my coffee, I read all of those, and it's always amazing to hear your opinions or your stories or even negative criticism on my videos. I, I, I like knowing what I'm doing wrong as well. But yeah, anyway, I'll stop talking now. I'll see you in the next one.